Today at the New York Auto Show, Jeep pulled the covers off the 2024 Wrangler, and there's some pretty decent changes for this model year. First, obviously, you're going to notice the new grill up front. It's a unique version of the seven slot grill. It looks to my eye a little bit more like the Jeep Renegade used to look than the Wrangler. We still have full LED headlights, of course, here round modified seven slot grill with little cut ins there for each of those headlights. It's a little bit more bold. This particular model is the four by E model. There is going to be a new Wrangler Rubicon with a factory 8,000 pound worn winch up front, but the rest of the styling is pretty similar to the existing Wrangler lineup. Under the hood, we're still gonna find the same engine lineup, 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6, two liter turbo, 6.4 liter V8, or the plug-in hybrid system with the 2.4 liter turbo. As far as the exterior changes go, not too much going on for the side. Obviously we get new wheels, just as you'd expect out of a refreshed model. You can still get this in two door, four door, hard top, soft top, power soft top, etc. Lots of different options. The tail lamp modules, basically the same as before, still have the spare tire right there out back. The biggest change happens inside where we find an all new and all enormous 12.3 inch LCD infotainment system right here in the middle. Let me know what you think of the design. I don't think this mates with the interior design quite right. On the driver's side, we have essentially the same steering wheel, very similar instrument cluster with a small, approximately seven inch LCD behind those physical gauges. But all versions are gonna have this big, just over 12 inch LCD. Again, I'm not sure about how I feel about this integration in the dashboard, but it is big, it's very crisp, and I like the functionality and the look a little bit better than what we find in the Bronco. There are a few different pages for off-roading, pitch and roll, we have vehicle dynamics, accessory gauges, we even have a front camera look if your vehicle is so equipped. This particular model is a pre-production one, so not everything works in there. It's gonna support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, of course. Big air vents below that, and then the rest of the dashboard is essentially unchanged as is the rest of the center console area. So same climate control, physical controls there, window switches right there in the middle, and of course the regular shifter. Another big change, powered seats up front are now available. Big change for the Wrangler, also four-way adjustable lumbar support. Towards the ceiling on the Wrangler, you notice a big change. This bar is chunkier, and it's not because the structure of the vehicle has grown, it's because we now have side curtain airbags front and rear for the first time ever in the Wrangler. This is something that we saw in the Bronco, and a lot of folks were wondering why didn't Jeep do it? Well, now they have. If you're considering a Rubicon, there are a number of upgrades for this model. In addition to that 8,000 pound winch up front, we now have full float axles in the rear, which is gonna make upgrading your tires a bit easier to do because they're gonna be more rugged, more dependable. And we have a 100 to one crawl ratio available in the Wrangler as well. Towing capacity has gone up to 5,000 pounds thanks to a combination of different factors, not the least of which are those new axles in the back. In case you're wondering, here's how the winch integrates into the front bumper, and yes, it is available even on the Wrangler 392, which is continuing for 2024. Some folks had assumed that because other models are no longer going to be available that use the 6.4, the Durango, the Charger, and the Challenger, that this might go the way of the Dodo Bird, but in fact, it is sticking around as the most bonkers version of the Wrangler still available. Also an interesting twist, you're still gonna be able to get the plug-in hybrid, but it's gonna be available as a less expensive model. Currently, this is the best-selling plug-in hybrid in America, and for 2024, there's gonna be a Sport S version of the Wrangler 4xE with exactly the same power output we find in the rest of the lineup. If you wanna get your hands on the new Wrangler, these should be on dealer lots very soon, probably a few months after you're watching this video. Stay tuned because hopefully, I will be driving one of these over the coming months. Hopefully, one of those base versions of the plug-in hybrid, which I'm really curious about. I don't have pricing just yet, but you can expect that it's gonna stick pretty close to the outgoing Wrangler model. Jeep has been losing a bit of sales to the Bronco over the last few quarters, and that's exactly why we see the extensive list of upgrades and updates on this new Wrangler, hopefully to stave off people trying to decide between Bronco and Wrangler. Be sure and sound off in the comment section below. Let me know, are you interested in the Wrangler with that new bigger LCD, the power seats, all those luxury upgrades, or are you interested in the Bronco, which is probably still gonna be a little bit better to drive on-road than the Wrangler with its solid front axle. See all of you later.